They were affected by railroads. Railroads moved them out cheaply and then reneged on their bargain to, you know, transport their goods and things at a cheap price. Um, so farmers jo joined an organization called the Grange, which was all aimed at cooperatives. Um, as farmers, we're all going to pool our crops together and store them together and sell them together and maybe hopefully get a better price. We're going to open up a cooperative store where we're going to buy the things that we need on our farms. And if we buy in bulk, maybe it'll be cheaper in the end, that kind of thing. Um, we're going to request that our state legislatures pass laws that forbid railroads from charging us high rates to transport our goods. Okay. Why were farmers not conservationists? You know, since the, the first settlers came to America in Jamestown, or for sure the Puritans, we have been under the impression that God will completely replenish the earth as we need it replenished. That we're kind of, we as Americans often feel we're God's chosen people. And so he must be going to give us what we need nature-wise too. Farmers aren't conservationists because their first goal is to make money off the land. So are they really concerned with plowing up the hill and then watching the hill run down the side of the hill when it rains? Not particularly, okay? They are today because, you know, land is at a premium, but they certainly weren't in 1880 when land was there for free in many cases. Uh, vertical and horizontal integration, how you create a trust or a monopoly. Remember, trust and monopoly, synonymous words. Horizontal integration, we all in here own the same, a company that makes the same product. Okay? Gradually, I start to buy some of you out. Those of you who are holdout. Cameron doesn't want to sell his company. He likes being the owner of his company. So what do I do? I start undercutting him. I sell my product for a lot less than he sells his, and pretty soon everybody's buying my product. They're not buying his, and that puts him out of business. Okay? That's a horizontal integration or consolidation, where you buy up the competition, you put the competition out of business, whatever the case might be. Okay? Um, Vertical integration is what Mr. Rockefeller and Mr. Carnegie did, where they owned aspects of the business from the raw materials to the finished product. So the example I'm going to give you is John D. Rockefeller's. All right? So here's Rockefeller. He owns an oil well. It's not enough to own an oil well. He also needs to then oil, own a refinery. So we can take that crude oil and process it into what was the major thing they processed it into in 1890? Kerosene, okay? And kerosene was used for lighting. So it's not enough that he owns a refinery that makes kerosene, he also wants to distribute the kerosene and make money selling it door to door or whatever. So he buys from Chris's can company cans and puts them, fills them with kerosene, puts paraffin on top, seals them, and then distributes them. Well, pretty soon he figures out that it costs him more to buy cans from Chris than if he owned his own can company. So he starts his own can company or buys Chris's can company. So now, instead of having Chris make a profit on cans, he's making the profit on the cans. And then he makes a profit on the distribution, etc. So he controls everything from the raw product, the oil in the ground, to getting it to your front door for you to use. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh. Um, so that creates a giant monopoly that's profit oriented with, in terms of him, oil. Horatio Alger. AP loves to ask a multiple choice question about Horatio Alger. Horatio Alger, if you remember, rags to riches. Okay? The little boy who works really, really hard, has good Christian morals and a little bit of luck, will go from selling pencils on the street corner to owning a factory which makes pencils. All right? These were books that were aimed at junior high age boys. 
to encourage them to be model citizens so they could become rich little boys or men, rich little men. Um, Andrew Carnegie, a great businessman because of A, vertical integration, because he respected his employees, C, because he gave railroads rebates, or D, because he invested in Britain. A, vertical integration. Did he respect his employees? You know, if he really did, he would have paid him a decent living wage. And did he? No. Did he give railroads rebates? Yes, but that doesn't necessarily make him a great businessman. <coughs> Let's say fair economics. Any questions on that? Government hands off. All right. Social Darwinism. The idea of Darwinism applied to humans. Survival of the fittest amongst humans. There, a couple of years they put on a question about a rose. It's a quote by um, John D. Rockefeller comparing humans to the American Beauty Rose. The American Beauty Rose is that rose that you see at Valentine's time. Okay, the perfect red rose, if you will. If you see a quote about an American Beauty Rose, and it's equating with people, it's John D. Rockefeller and it's social Darwinism. That's all you need to know. Rose, John D. Rockefeller, social Darwinism. Uh, why was social Darwinism rejected by critics, or why did progressives reject social Darwinism? Because social Darwin suggests that if you are poor, it's because you're genetically inferior. If you're rich, you're genetically superior. And according to progressives, that's just not the case, and we all have the we should all have equal opportunity, um, the same education, the same opportunity chances to make it wealthy. Why was it less a fair? Because um, does the biggest lion in the pack need somebody to help him get to be the biggest lion? No, it's all because he's the biggest lion type of thing. A quote, drunkards in ditches, nature puts them there. Is this an example of gospel of wealth, progressivism, social gospel movement, or social Darwinism? Social Darwinism. The fact that there are drunks in ditches says that that's because they're naturally inferior. Okay? So what's gospel of wealth? The who? Andrew Carnegie. The idea that wealthy people are the trustees of the wealth of the nation. You as a wealthy people owe giving back a lot of that wealth to the nation. But do I give Jared the individual money? No. I give money to build libraries so that Jared can get off his rear end, go to the library and become an educated person, and then improve his life, okay? Uh, Andrew Carnegie was the big proponent of Gospel of Wealth, and he gave over $300 million of his money, though he died with another $800 million when he died, but that's another story. But he gave $300 million to things like building libraries. Social gospel movement came out of the Protestant, liberal Protestant churches. And one of the leaders was a guy named Reverend Rauschenbusch, who wanted to integrate what's called social conscious with religion. It's really implementing the, the golden rule, okay, in everyday life, doing done to others as you have them doing to you. The social gospel movement is, remember our 240 pounds of sunshine? The middle, upper middle class lady in her heavy taffeta dress with a big bustle on her backside, which makes her butt look four times bigger than it really was. The big hat, sailing into the tenement house, knocking on your door with her nose turned up the whole time because all she can smell is cooking cabbage. You open the door and you look like Yannick's mom in that film we watched, you know, with your little babushka scarf on. Um, coming from your work in the factory, your work as a maid, whatever the case might be, and she wants to tell you how to live and to be an American. Okay, not very successful because you probably are looking down your nose at this poor little immigrant woman who doesn't appreciate your attitude. Um, what were the, okay, so this next question is one that everybody should have attempted on the year that this test, because it just, you just have to think. 